I really gotta get my yard mowed today. Or I guess it looks like I'm doing a starter instead. Dang. I do want to say if you get into this situation where the starter is spinning but it's just not engaging and you really need to use the tractor right then, there is a way to get the starter to work. All you have to do is take a long screwdriver and put it right down on the top of the starter and give it a couple whacks with a hammer. And the starter should work. It's just that's not a permanent fix, obviously. It's not good for these starters to get whacked like that with the hammer. So definitely just use that as a temporary fix and then get your starter working again. I'll take off the side cover and show you exactly where I'm hitting on the starter. All right, so here's the starter motor. And if you can see right on top here, there's a bunch of hammer marks. This starter has actually been acting up for a little bit now. So I have had to hit it on top for a little bit now. So it's got a couple little marks there. But yeah, I just stick the screwdriver down through the top there and then give it a couple taps right there and then it always functions again. If I remove the starter and clean it up, it actually should be able to function properly with just that cleanup. But just in case, I did order a replacement starter. So if the cleaning up of that one doesn't work, then I can put this one in because I can't have this tractor be down for too long. But while I have this good starter out, I can show you what is going wrong with that one and how this works. So first of all, this is a Bendix gear and it is riding on a splined helical cut shaft inside there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that very well. When you turn the key to start the engine, the shaft inside this pinion gear starts to spin. And inertia holds this gear in place for just a little bit. So inside, the shaft spins counterclockwise. This gear because of inertia wants to stay in place. So it's almost like it's spinning this way on that shaft inside, which is what pushes that gear out and allows it to contact the flywheel. And then once the motor starts, the pinion gear starts to spin faster than the shaft of the starter motor, which allows it to spin back into place on that helical gear. So I hope that makes sense. And there's also a spring inside the end here, which helps push it back into place once the motor has started. Hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how this all works. But what's happening with this one is there is either old grease or dirt or some type of contaminant inside the shaft here. So when you turn the key and that shaft begins to spin, this gear starts to spin at the same speed of the shaft real quickly and it doesn't have time for it to kick out. So it just begins spinning as fast as that shaft and it just stays in this place spinning away without contacting the flywheel. So when I tap on it with the hammer and screwdriver, it kind of breaks this loose a little bit and allows that gear once again to spin and kick out like that. So hopefully that makes sense, but there's a lot of way better videos that explaining that on YouTube if you want to check those out. I'll probably have one linked down in the description if you want a more in-depth description of this whole system. The first thing that you want to do before removing the starter is disconnecting the ground cable from the negative terminal on the battery. And I'm actually going to remove the whole battery and just turn it around. I've got plenty of cable length to turn it because this positive cable is a little bit close to all of this metal stuff here. So not the safest thing. So if you see the battery turned around, that's why. I love how it says in the manual, just remove the bolts and then remove it from the engine. Um... Uh, that's a little easier said than done, John Deere. So these bolts can be accessed with a normal socket and universal swivel, but it is still a little bit crooked on the bolt. So if your bolts are pretty stuck like mine were, then it might not be good enough to just use the normal socket. So I went ahead and bought a set of shallow universal swivel joints. So what these are is just the swivel with the nut as just one piece. And that allows 
to get that socket all the way onto the nut. And then I'm easily able to get onto that nut and break it loose. But of course we need to remove the cable also. And that's a 7 16 Obviously you can do this before you loosen up the starter. And we can just let that drop and finish taking the mounting bolts out. And just be careful to not turn the nut out too far with the socket on there or else you'll get your socket stuck. They come out pretty nice by hand once they're loose. Then you just got to find the right angle to get the starter out. And there we go. And there you can see it working the same way, but it definitely doesn't kick it out as nice. I'm just gonna be putting this new starter in to see how it works and hopefully I won't have any issues with that. But if you need to use your old starter, really the only issue should be that this pinion gear is not sliding up on the spline spiral gear inside. So if you just lube that up a little bit, it should actually work just fine. I'm a little bit concerned about using this starter because the cap for the spring inside here is broken and I just broke it even more right there. So I'm sure I could glue that on somehow and protect that a little bit better, but might not be best to use this when uh, contaminants can get inside that spring area in there. But hopefully yours will be all good and you can just lube up that spiral spline shaft in there and get your pinion gear moving smoothly on that and put it back in. And of course now is a great time to get this area cleaned up a little bit since the starter's not in the way. And another great thing to do is to look at the teeth on your flywheel right here. And to do that, I removed the spark plug wire first. And then you can just reach on the shaft on the back of the engine and just slowly turn the motor over. If you take the spark plug out, it would be even easier. But you can just go ahead and look at all the teeth and make sure there's none that are broken or overly worn out but mine looks really good so we can go ahead and put the starter back in now we just gotta slide the starter into place line up the holes for the mounting bracket And just bolt it back in place. There's not really any room for adjustment, so it's just put it in and tighten it up. Now this step's kind of optional, I guess, but I'm just going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on the screw or the bolt for the wiring just to help protect that connection. Probably not a huge deal, but it is kind of out. A little bit out in the elements so 
that'll just help protect it from any corrosion or anything that might cause it to get a bad connection. And then just put the wire on. Tighten up the nut. And then I just try and make sure that the wire is not coming out towards the side panel at all. Just make sure it's nice and tidy up in there. Now we got my battery set up in a little bit better way here. And get this reconnected. Not super psyched about the wires being crossed, but should be fine. And definitely never tap on your terminals with a hammer. That's really bad for them. And now we can test out the starter. I still have my spark plug disconnected, so this isn't gonna start, but ready to try that starter out. All right, contact. Awesome, it works perfect. And that's really all there is to putting a starter into one of these. It's really a pretty easy job. If you have the right tools, it is a little tricky to get to those nuts, of course, but once you get the right tool to get in there, it just comes out, put the new one in, simple as that. But if you like this video, I'm always making videos like this, and here's one for you right here, and I'll catch you on the next one. Right. Put this back on.